In this video, I'm going to work an example where we use the first order kinetics rate law to determine uh, several variables with a sample of iodine-131. So the problem that I've made up was if we begin with 5 grams of iodine-131 and find that after 10 days our sample's mass has reduced to the amount of 2.1 grams. So I've kind of given a steps on how we would solve for this. Uh, so if we solve for the half-life, or if we just put this in the uh, formula, uh, I'm going to write the first order kinetics. The activity, or again this would be the mass, after time t is equal to negative kT plus the natural log of the initial activity or the initial mass. <clears throat> so if we notice from the problem, we're given uh, the initial amount, 5 grams, so that would be N0, so I'm going to go ahead and write that over here. The initial amount or initial activity, since the mass is proportional to the activity. You can use those interchangeably. It's 21 grams. Oh, that's N of T. And so our amount remaining was 2.1 grams. We began with 5 grams. So that's our initial amount. So I'm going to write that down. And this time given is just any time. So that would mean T is equal to 10 days. Okay. And we are asked to solve for the half-life. If the problem had been worded so that we had 2.5 grams remaining after 10 days, since we started with 5 and had exactly half 10 days later, then that would be the half-life. But we're going to actually have to solve for the half-life. And just like almost every story problem there is, there's a formula that we use to solve what we're looking for. Uh, there's one equation. We're actually asked to solve for T one-half. So T one-half is 0.693 divided by k, and we're not given the rate constant k that we need to solve for the half-life, but we can use the first order rate law to solve for k, and once we have k, then we can solve for t one-half. So I'm going to plug these given values <clears throat> into this equation. And I'm going to use the expand or the condensed equation. So if I rearrange this and brought the natural log of n0 onto the other side, we'd have a difference. And that turns into nt divided by n0 equals negative kT. <clears throat> this will just save us from doing some extra algebra steps. And so if I plug this in, I'm going to take the natural log. There's 2.1 grams remaining, so that's the numerator. And we don't need the grams unit, they're both going to cancel. And the log is the exponent, which is unitless. So I'll just plug this in, negative k. Now t is 10 days. So I'm going to solve for k. And I'm going to make this side of the equation negative and this side positive. And then divide both sides by 10 days. So algebraically, I just multiplied both sides of the equation by negative 1. So my negative 
kt became positive, my positive natural log became negative. And now I found my TI calculator. <clears throat> so I should be able to do this without doubting the calculations. So when we plug that in, we've got to be careful that we make sure we enter the negative sign. Take the negative natural log and that's going to be 2.1 divided by 5. Close the parentheses and then I'm going to divide that by 10. So when I do that, I get this number. This would be reciprocal days because our denominator is days. I'm going to write the k on the left hand side. k equals 0 0.08675 uh, 1 over day, the unit. And that's just part of what I need to solve for the half-life. So now that I have k, t1 half is going to equal 0.693 divided by that number k. And I'm a little uh, dyslexic. I think I have frog-shaped fingertips and I don't like to re-enter a number in the calculator. So anytime we've got a number that we've calculated that needs to go in the denominator, we can just take the reciprocal of this number on the calculator and it'll put that number in the denominator. So by hitting the x to the minus 1 key, hit x to the minus 1, and then I'm going to multiply, so I'm really taking 0.693 times 1 over the answer that I already had in the calculator. So the reciprocal of this answer times 0.693 equals 7.988. So we'll uh, write t one half equals, we'll just round that to 8 days. Okay. And since we have our book, we could check our answer. We saw on a previous slide, well, this is in the book, iodine 131 has a half-life in terms of years, 0 0.022 years. So if we converted and again, this is an accepted value that you could find uh, on a table or Google it. Google the half-life of uranium or iodine-131. And if the table is in years, just to keep units consistent, oftentimes we would see the half-life in years. So if we take 0 0.022 years and convert that to days, there are 365 days in one year. And so I'm going to put 0 0.022 divided by 365. Oh. oh, I got my units wrong. Yeah, so a year can't cancel a day. This is what happens when I take sinus medicine. <clears throat> and just looking at that answer, the half-life would be 6 times 10 to the minus 5th, so I knew that couldn't possibly be right. So let me try to think clearly here. i got to put years in the denominator, 365 days in the numerator. Then my units cancel. So I always show units just so I can see when I make a silly mistake. 0.022 times 365. Yeah, that's better. So that turns into 8.03 days. And we'll just write 8.0 days, which is the answer that we did get. So if we were working half-life problems, uh,
because each isotope has its half-life, that is a property like each substance has its own boiling point, uh, we can't really just make up a problem out of the air because of that. So this is verifiable there. Okay, so now that we have the K value, which we had to solve for in order to find the half-life, then we can answer the second question. So the second question is how much iodine-131 will remain after 16 days. So I'm going to rewrite this equation on a new sheet of paper. So we've got the natural log of n at time t equals negative kt plus the natural log of the initial amount. And now I know k. And my t value has changed for the problem. How much iodine-131 will remain after 16 days? So now t, I should write that first. For the second part of the problem, t is 16 days. And we solved for k earlier. And that is the decay constant of iodine. So no matter what the story problem is, that constant will be the same number because that's what it means to be a constant. So 0 0.086751 over day. So I'm going to use that data and plug those values into this equation. And now we are looking for this value here. So the amount that remains at t equal 16 days. So that's why the subscript t is here. So for any particular time t, this equation is always going to work. So I'm going to rewrite the ln of our activity at time t equals negative. <clears throat> and I'm going to plug the values in. So our k value is 0 0.08675 reciprocal days because we used days to solve for that times t. The t in the second half of the problem is 16 days. So that's why we have to be careful that our decay constant has the same units as our time that's given. And then that is plus the natural log of the original amount, which was 5 grams. So our initial problem, we began with 5 grams of iodine-131, so I'm going to just take the natural log of 5. So I'm going to rewrite the natural log of n of t and then process through that. So that's negative 0 0.086751 times 16 plus the natural log of 5. And we really shouldn't have to close the parentheses, but I'm kind of anal about that. So if we do that, we get the ln of t is 0.2214. So when I'm solving for algebra, if I wouldn't have written that down, I might have thought that this was my answer. But we're solving for the natural log of the concentration is that value. And to get rid of the ln, to undo that function, we uh, use the e to the x button, which is right above the natural log key. If we put e underneath both sides here, <clears throat> we can't put e underneath whenever we have a sum. 
or a difference. So we could solve for that by taking e, raising it to the parentheses, the entire equation. But I find it's just as easy to plug those values in. I come up with this number. Now I'm going to undo the natural log with the base e. So the ln and the e cancel each other. And since this is an exponent, again, I'm going to leave the entire number in the calculator. And then to raise the base e to that power, you just hit the second log, and that brings up the e e key, and I'm going to hit second answer. So that second answer key is probably my favorite button because it keeps me from having to re-enter all those numbers in the calculator. So now we have n of t equals 1.2478, we'll round that up to 1.25 grams. <clears throat> and this type of problem, we can often check our math by just seeing if the problem makes sense. So if we recall, we began, that's our answer, we began with 5 grams, and we solved for the half-life. That was 8 days. <clears throat> so that means after 8 days, uh, in 8 days, half of this will remain. So after 8 days, 2.5 grams remains. And then in eight more days, which is 16, so there's our total of 16 days, half of 2.5 grams remains. So in 16 days, uh, 2.5, if we take half of that, we're going to get uh, 12 and a half. 12 and a half, 1.25, and that was in grams. So again, it's a good way, it's a good idea to look and see if our answer even makes sense. And um, so again, the, one of the tricks, so to speak, when we're working a half-life problem, we need to know the first order rate law written as this uh, linear equation. And we also need to know that the half-life, first order kinetics half-life, is always 0.693 divided by k. So that means our initial amount of any radioactive material that we start with has no bearing on how much is left.